All right, we're going to get started here. Sharice Rivers here with Smokey Robinson, the most talented, talented Motown I have ever heard, and I'm honored to be in your presence. You have no idea. Well, uh, gosh, thank you so much. Yeah, we're <laughs> all beautiful. here for a, a great cause, and um, we're going to raise uh, some serious bucks today, aren't we? Yes, we are. Awesome. Very good. Absolutely. So let's just kind of, you know, talk about history and, you know, where you've come from just a little bit. Um, you know, one thing that I notice about you is your transition phase when you were singing. You had, you had your group, and then you went solo. You know, what was that transition? What, uh, how did you kind of make that, that move to do that? Well, uh, when I retired from the Miracles, my intention was to never be in show business again. You know, I was a uh, vice president of Motown, so I was just, and that was when I moved out here to Los Angeles, because prior to that, I was living in Detroit. And when I retired from the group, I moved out here because Barry moved the entire Motown operation out to Los Angeles, you know. So I moved out. I was just going to be vice president and just do that and, okay. and be cool and be a family man. <laughs> I, had, I had no intentions no of ever coming back to show business. And then uh, going solo is uh, the cat's meow. Did well, you love it? And like, is that your thing? Well, yeah, it's, yeah. It, I, it's what I love. That's sure. what, and you're doing it today still. Yeah, I am. <laughs> do, do you still grab a, a pen and just write stuff down and keep creating? Or I, I write almost every day, honey. Every day? Yeah, I've got two new CDs that are coming out, two new albums that are coming out, really. Oh, probably before the end of the year, one will be out and the other one will be out in the spring. I'm doing one in English and one in Spanish. Nice. So, wow. Uh, yeah. So uh, So we're still um, doing what yeah. you love doing. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and you're probably never going to retire because you love doing it too much, I assume. Well, I, like I said, I've, I, I, tried, I tried that. It didn't work. Retirement did not work for me. <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, it just didn't work. I, I was miserable after about three years or so of yeah. not doing it, you know. Yeah, anybody I've ever met that has a love and a passion for something, it's like, you can't stop them. Like, no. You cannot stop them. Absolutely not. So uh, that leads me to legacy, you know, grandkids and kids and stuff like that. Who did you pass your singing talents to? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about singing talents. You're funny. No, um, no one really in my family sings professionally. I remember my daughter is, a, is really a great singer, she, but she makes baby clothes. She doesn't want to sing. You know, I tried to get her to sing when she was a teenager. And she didn't want to. You really? Know. My granddaughter, her daughter, is an excellent singer and an excellent musician, and she just graduated from USC um, studying music business. Oh. And she plays the violin and the guitar and the piano, and she has a great voice. So I guess if there's a legacy to be had, she'll carry it on if she feels like it. She feels like it. So there's no hope for my daughter taking over my business, it sounds like. <laughs> I hear that all the time. So that's great, though. Sometimes it's better to do it a different way. Yeah. Uh, I have to ask, what, of all the songs, what's your favorite song? No, you don't have to ask me that. <laughs> that that's an Im- all of them. <laughs> that's an impossible question to answer, you know. I have no idea. You know, I love music. If I could tell you what my favorite song was, it'd probably be something that I had absolutely nothing to do with. You know, just a song that I love. You know, I've been hearing all kinds of music since I was a baby. So, but I can tell you what my favorite album of all times is. Okay. What's going on, Marvin Gaye? Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, Marvin was my brother, brother, and we were together almost every day. And when he was writing it, he said to me, he said, "Smokey, God is writing this album." Wow. He said, "I'm just a callus. I'm just sitting here at the piano, and God is writing this album. Listen to it. God wrote it. It's prophecy." Mm-hmm. It's more poignant today than it was when it came out, you know. All the stuff that he talks about on there is just happening right now. Mm. So uh, it, it's my favorite album. Wow. Um, last question. I know <clears throat> we got to wrap this up. I want to hear a story, whether it's Temptations or Diana Ross, something not a lot of people a story. know. A story. Tell me a story. Give me some good juicy stuff from like your I don't, experiences. I don't, I don't gossip. So no. I, I, so, so, yeah, so. All right. A personal story, <laughs> since you don't gossip, about um, maybe something that a lot of people don't know about you. Oh, gosh. What would they not know about me? Probably, well, I was going to say golf, but everybody knows that. So, <laughs> Oh gosh, I can't think of anything. That okay, then what's your after in- all these years? I can't think, and especially now with the internet. Oh know, yeah, there's nothing that nothing's anybody, private anymore, yeah, right? You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, so, so what's know, your handicap they know then? <laughs> my handicap mm-hmm. is my clubs. Okay, they were today. I, I, I actually played. I, well, I went out there this morning. I'm not going to say I played because it was horrible. You know, but golf is like that. Yes, golf does that. You know, some days you're a hero, and the next day you're a bum. You know, so. Um, 
but it's my passion. It's, it's what I love. Lovely. And uh, when I'm not doing music or something, got business or something like that, if I can, I'm playing golf. What is it about golf? Because when I started playing golf a little over a year ago, all of a sudden I start getting good, right? Yeah. And you yeah. start getting good and we start playing and you're yeah. like, I could go in the PGA. I could go compete uh, and do don't this. Ever think and it. then <laughs> the next day you go out there and then you can't play Squatsky, right? Yeah, yeah, so it's true. a love and hate relationship with Absolutely. golf. So, it so most certainly is. I, I think it's probably the toughest game in the world because yes. you don't have an opponent. See, you're your own opponent in golf. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're playing yourself every time you play. You know, it's not like the guys that you're playing can run up and grab your club or throw <laughs> you down or <laughs> kick your ball out of the way or something like that. Yeah. They can't even speak when you're hitting your ball. Nobody can run behind you, ah, they can't even, you know, they can't even speak. Everybody has to be quiet while you hit your ball and the ball's just laying there. Nobody's throwing it to you or anything like that, yeah. daring you to hit it where you trying to hit it too. Okay. And it it's doesn't help game. that it's a little stick with a little ball and yes. we got to hit right on it, right? Yeah, <laughs> That's I'm fun. You. Hey, we like golf talk. That's very important in these All types right. of things. Hey, <laughs> thank you so much for this interview and uh, we really appreciate your time. You're welcome, honey. Okay. Thank you.